Hi everyone and welcome back to Newegg TV. My name is Paul and as promised I'm here to give you guys an unboxing and overview of this brand new motherboard from Gigabyte. This is the new Gigabyte Z87X UD4H. As the name implies this board features the Z87 chipset. That is the new chipset that has also launched in tandem with the Intel fourth generation core processors also known as Haswell. Uh, so this is a socket 1150 motherboard which means it is not backwards compatible with socket 1155. So no Sandy Bridge, no Ivy Bridge processors in this board, please, only has well. Uh, this is also the UD4H, so it's got the ultra durable design by Gigabyte, ultra durable 5 plus to be more specific. It's also ultra cool, which um, I'm assuming they're talking about the heat sinks. Maybe they just have a really high opinion of themselves. That's fine. I'm cool with that. Uh, apart from that, we also have ultra performance, all IR digital CPU power design. If you guys aren't familiar with IR, that's international rectifier which also happens to be my superhero name. I hope there's no conflict, uh, uh, copyright infringement there. We also have Ultra Safe, UFI Dual BIOS, uh, Ultra USB 3. We have 10 USB 3.0 ports integrated onto this motherboard. Flipping around here to the back, we have a bunch more information. Uh, let, me, let me sort of sum it up for you. We have durable black solid caps. That's part of the UD5 ultra durable uh, construction of this board. We also have 15 micron gold plated CPU socket. That's going to help to lower the resistance as the CPU is communicating uh, with the rest of the board. Um, so you've also got that. Intel LAN, so uh, one of the highest grade LANs that you can purchase. Also the highest compatibility in the Intel NIC uh, with electrostatic discharge protection. Uh, more info on the international rectifier digital power design digital power design, that's digital PWMs with IR power stage uh, integrated circuits, so you get digital power delivery to the CPU and the memory. You also have the double copper PCB that Gigabyte has become quite well known for. Quick buttons on board for stuff like power reset, clear CMOS, uh, the dual BIOS dip switch, voltage read points, six fan connectors on the board, uh, you get the OC PEG PCI Express serial ATA power connector so you can provide some extra power to your PCI Express lanes, a debug display, eight serial ATA three ports, six of those will be natively but from the uh, Z87 chipset, 10 USB 3.0 ports, a layout of the I.O. right there, some more uh, icons here for some extra functionality integrated onto the board. New heat sink design for better cooling, uh, on-off charge 2 function right now, they've actually added that to the USB 3.0 front panel connector as well, uh, and a dual BIOS so you have a backup in case you have a corruption or a failure during a BIOS update. Taking a look inside the box, oh, we have a, a cardboard. Okay, ah, that's that's the motherboard itself. All right, we're going to come back to that and finish with a close-up look. We have documentation. We got some accessories down in here. Let me get all these out first, and then we will go over what's what. Starting with most importantly, we have a gigabyte case badge. So, gigabyte uh, case badge. If you like to display those on your case. A SLI bridge here, which is also a nice little, little feature. It's a flexi one, uh, so it will handle different uh, spacing depending on uh, where you install your video cards. NVIDIA SLI logo, and it's black, so it should match with, with well, black matches with just about anything. Uh, also, your motherboard I.O. shield right here with a black background and color coding for your different ports. We also have four serial ATA cables. Uh, these are going to be SATA Rev 1, 2, or 3 compatible, so don't worry whether you're plugging in an older mechanical drive or a brand new state-of-the-art SSD, it will work. It will work at its rated speeds. So you also have the little metal clasps on each end and uh, looks like you get two that have a 90 degree angle bracket and a straight plug and then two more that have straight plugs on both ends. An appropriate variety in my personal opinion. Uh, also the Intel 8 series utilities and the UD uh, display, I'm sorry, the UD driver set. Uh, I recommend going to Gigabyte's website to download the latest versions of those rather than loading off the disk, but you have that as well. The Z87X UD4H manual right here with ultra durable emblazoned across the front. You'll get a layout of the board. You get a block diagram. Ah, oh, Gigabyte, thank you for making block diagrams. I really like them. Uh, we also have uh, all these specific components installed on the motherboard, so I'll be going over those for you as well. And finally, for you non-English speakers, a multilingual installation guidebook. And now at last we move on to the board itself. So as you can see, Gigabyte has gone with a quite distinct, uh, mostly black with red and silver highlights uh, color scheme on this board. So you got your Gigabyte logo, your ultra durable logo, uh, heat piped heat sink up here as well as a nice uh, looking one there on the Z87 chipset. Let me flip around to the back of the board to give you guys a better look at the PCB, which is a nice color black, I will say. Uh, also you have uh, Phillips head 
spring-loaded screws which are attach attaching most of your heat sinks on the board so that should make them fairly easy to remove if you ever need to do so in the future if you're planning a water cooling loop or something along those lines. Uh, also wanted to point out while we're taking a full look at the board, uh, the fan headers. You get a total of six. They're almost all PWM four pin connectors, except for one, I'll point out which one. Uh, but you got a fan header, system fan header up here in the top left, that's four pin. Your CPU fan headers, actually regular and optional, or for primary and secondary are both right there, also both four pin. A three pin fan header right there, so that's the single three pin. Another four pin down there on the lower right, and a last four pin down here on the lower left. So uh, plenty of fan connectivity if you want to set up and connect all of your case fans to your motherboard, and that will give you a bit better control of them within the operating system. Let's take a closer look at the board. I'm going to start down in the lower right, as is my want. And uh, we're going to start off with, of course, your front panel connectors. They're in that little box right there. They're color-coded. You got a little chart underneath there to kind of tell you which is which. Also the system fan header that I already kind of pointed out to you, that's also right there. You have a clear CMOS uh, jumper right there. Uh, just bring your own jumper cap, I suppose. Uh, you also have a USB 3.0 front panel connector right there. That's one of two USB 3.0 front panel connectors on the board. Uh, this one does not support the constant charge feature, but the other one does, and you will notice that one by the red background when we get to it. Uh, three USB 2.0 front panel connectors, one, two, and three right there. Of course, those, all of those as well as the USB 3 uh, are going to support two uh, USB ports. Uh, you also have a COM header right there. You also have a TPM header, that's Trusted Platform Module, and that's uh, primarily used more, more so in business environments, but it is there if you need it. System fan header right there. Also, your front panel audio connection point uh, for your HD audio right there as well. You get an SPDIF header above that as well. And uh, your audio componentry, by the way, is all right here along the side of the board. You can see some of those uh, capacitors that they're using for that. Realtek chip right there, uh, since it's right in view, is the ALC898. supports up to 7.1 channel audio. Uh, next up, we have our PCI Express slots. Um, so you'll notice an array of these. First off, for X1 PCI Express, you have one, two, and three of those right there. You have a legacy PCI slot right there, so if you have an older uh, uh, sound card, I don't know, who uses PCI anymore, but some people do, so it's there if you need it. Uh, you also have three full-length PCI Express X16 slots. You're actually wired up for uh, X16, X8, and X4. These are going to behave differently depending on what you have plugged in. And uh, we already mentioned you have Crossfire X and SLI support. So you have two-way SLI support, so that would be with these two slots. It'll run at X16 if you just have a single card plugged in, uh, X8 and X8 if you have two cards plugged in. Uh, also, three-way Crossfire X support, and if you do use all three of these slots, you'll be running at X8, X4, and X4. Moving over to the right, we have our Gigabyte logoed heatsink on our Z87 chipset right there. Again, there's sort of a closer look at it. And the chipset's controlling lots of stuff on the board, but it is also has it also has an integrated PCH or peripheral controller hub. Uh, that gives you access to six serial ATA revision three, six gigabits per second port right there, natively controlled. You also get RAID support with those, so RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, and RAID 10 available. Uh, you also have a couple gray ports here. These are add-ons, uh, and those are by way of a Marvell 88SE9172 chip. Uh, there's also uh, an eSATA on the back. I'll show you guys in a second. That's also from the uh, Marvell 88SE9172. And uh, actually, out of this, you also get support for RAID 0 and RAID 1. So lots of RAID functionality built in here as well. Uh, you'll notice a little serial ATA power connector right there. And again, that is uh, for providing supplemental power to your PCI Express lanes. So if you are running a multi-card configuration or something like that, definitely want to plug that in. If you're just running a single card or you don't have much plugged into your PCI Express, you can usually go without plugging that in. I mentioned another USB 3.0 front panel header. And that is the red one, which is right over there. Uh, USB 3.0 for the front panel, and the red background on that indicates you get uh, compatibility with the charging function, or the on-off charge 2 function provided by Gigabyte. Uh, moving up the side of the board, we have another, there the three pin fan header that I kind of talked about already a little bit. 24 pin main motherboard power connector. Uh, some more audio components here. Oh, I almost, I almost glossed over the uh, debug LED. Debug LED right there, which is really handy if you're getting your system up and running for the first time. You'll see post codes appear there. If your system freezes or something like that on boot, you can reference the code and get a much better idea of what might be going wrong. Uh, above, or I should say at the top right of the board, you have some more 
uh, onboard switches. So you got a couple switch right there, uh, BIOS switch as well as SB. So you have a dual BIOS capability on this board. You can use uh, the BIOS switch to switch back and forth between those. Then you can use the second switch to enable or disable the dual BIOS function. Uh, you also have a clear CMOS onboard button right there. You have a reset switch, the little blue button right there, and then you have a nice big red power button. So surface mount bu mounted buttons are very handy if you're doing an outside of the box build to get your system uh, or to check your parts for the first time, which I always recommend doing. Also, DDR3, you'll notice four of these slots right there. I like that they are color coded. It's dual channel, so you want to use the paired colors to uh, match up your memory. I recommend buying uh, buy your memory in sets of two or as a four channel kit so you make sure that you have identical memory plugged into each dim slot uh, and then again at least get two at a time so you can make use of dual channel capability uh, this supports up to eight gigs per dim so that gives you up to 32 gigs total of ram available capacity available on this motherboard uh, and then you get official uh, Intel support for DDR3 speeds up to 1600, but of course you can go beyond that with overclock speeds. Uh, it also supports Intel's XMP or extreme memory profiles. So if you get overclock memory, you can plug it in, set up the XMP profile, and get yourself off and running. Now, if you are going to be using overclock memory speeds or overclocking your processor in general, remember processors are not always created equal. So depending on your CPU, you might have more or less luck with your overclocks. But that kind of goes without saying if you're familiar with overclocking. But since I'm talking about the CPU, let's talk about the socket. It is socket 1150. That's 1150. You want a fourth generation Intel Core processor, aka Haswell. And again, not backwards compatible with socket 1155. So don't try to drop a Sandy Bridge or an Ivy Bridge processor in there. Uh, you also have power delivery from the motherboard. And uh, you'll notice some nice beefy heat sinks up here on your power delivery components. Uh, you might also be able to see the power stage uh, ICs that are under there, but they're underneath, and so you probably can't see many of them. There's actually one up here, like right there, that you can kind of see, but uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, red and black and silver is your color, the colors of choice from Gigabyte for this board. Uh, you can also see all of your power phases delivering uh, clean and stable power to the CPU, which is vital if you're going to be going for overclocking or for a long lifespan and uh, nice stable performance overall. In the top left, right up here, you have your supplemental 8-pin uh, CPU power connector, so make sure you route a cable over for, for that from your power supply. Uh, there's another closer look at that 4-pin fan header that I already pointed out at the beginning. And lastly, we'll, we'll finish with the I.O. So uh, for your inputs and outputs on the side of the board right here, starting off with a combo PS2 port. Uh, so that will support a mouse or a keyboard. I know it's a legacy connection, but a lot of folks might still have, say, a uh, PS2 keyboard that has N key rollover, and uh, maybe it's mechanical and costs a lot of money, and you don't want to ditch it. So nice to have that available as well. Uh, you also have a couple USB 3.0 ports below that. Uh, bear in mind that all these six USB 3.0 ports on the back of this board, as well as two from the uh, onboard header down there at the bottom of the motherboard, uh, still controlled by the USB 3.0 uh, and USB 3.0 from the Z87 chipset. Uh, Gigabyte has used a Renesas, I believe. Let me double check. Yes, a Renesas USB 3.0 hub to provide you extra actual USB 3.0 connection points. So you have six more available back here, as well as the uh, four available from the USB 3.0 headers on the board that I already showed you. So that gives you a total of 10. You will also have an iGPU or integrated GPU in your processor when you install it. So uh, you can use the video outs back here to make use of that. Uh, you get a DVI, you also get a VGA, you also get a full-size display port as well as an HDMI. So pretty much any type of monitor you might be connecting, you will have support for. Uh, and you actually get up to 1920 by 1200 resolution from the D-Sub and the DVI. The HDMI can actually do up to 4K resolution at 24 hertz. Uh, and then you can also have the display port, which can do up to 3840 by 2160 and also supports display port version 1.2. So that's also nice. You get an optical Toslink connector right there for your audio out. Uh, a couple more eSATA connectors right there. Again, uh, SATA revision 3, 6 gigabits per second capable. Uh, and again, from a Marvel 88SE9172 add-on chip. Uh, there is your NIC for your uh, LAN, and that's the Intel gigabit ethernet uh, up to 1000 megabit connection points or connection available through there and then finally your analog connectors right here for your audio out as well as your microphone in
And that is going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Once again, this has been our unboxing and overview of the new Gigabyte Z87X UD4H motherboard featuring the Z87 chipset and the 1150 socket for Intel's fourth generation core processors, aka Haswell. I'm Paul with Newegg TV, and if you enjoyed this video, you should subscribe to our Newegg TV YouTube channel. You should also like the video if you found it to be interesting and useful. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.